Hi, this is Tim. And in this video, we're gonna go through how a PLC actually scans. Hopefully you're coming here from our What Does a Blank Program Do video. Uh, if you're not, I'll put a link to it in the description. Make sure you go back and watch it. That way you kind of have a context of what we're talking about. Uh, this may be the most important video in the series. Um, now, now, I say that probably about um, half of the videos that we do because they are all important. But really, one of the key factors that makes a great programmer and a great program troubleshooter is that they understand how a PLC really works under the hood. So stick with this video all the way to the end. It is a tougher video. It's not as exciting as some of our videos. Uh, in fact, uh, I really, this is actually three tries of this video. We tried to make it more fun, uh, but really in the end, we just had to write it out on a whiteboard. Let us know in the comments how you think we could do better. Please ask questions. I mean, like I said, getting through this and grasping this concept will be key to you advancing your PLC skills. So the program that's running in there right now is pretty much this. So a lot of people would say that this program can do nothing, but it can do something because there's more to a PLC than simply what you see in the ladder. In fact, what we would call this program but over here, you have your inputs, and over here, you have your outputs. And so the first thing a PLC does is it scans its inputs. Then it executes its program, then it updates its physical outputs. And finally it goes up here and it has a little something there. And then it goes back around to here. Now we're not going to get into this little squeakily line up here, but it is called the overhead. And this is where the PLC does some, you know, various maintenance steps. And actually this is where it talks to RS Logix 500, some various things like that. Let's look a little closer at this input and this output section. So in this input, we have those data table bits that you're talking about. Now, I'm only going to put a few of them here, but you, you saw the input data table. There were tons of zeros, and we hit a button to turn to a one. Well, let's just, that's a little box over here. And for the example that we were pressing, that was I colon zero dot zero slash zero. And there are many of these. So there, there are multiple of these. I'm not going to put all of them. But I colon zero dot zero slash one would be the next input and so forth. But when you read an input in a program, are you actually reading the physical input or are you reading these boxes? The answer is you're actually reading these boxes. And at this first step right here, I'm actually going to move this up to give us a little more room. At this first input step, it actually looks at all of its physical inputs and updates these boxes. Simplifying this a little bit, we have a 24 volt power supply out there. And here we have a terminal called DCCOM. And that is connected to our power supply minus. So going back to our original wiring diagram up here, we have our plus 24 volts. And we have terminals here. And this one says I slash zero. The next one says I slash one and so forth. And so for this first input, we came down to a switch, to a push button. Actually, that is our green push button. Now, there's all types of ways people use to describe this, whether they say input is on, input is off, do I have voltage, do I not have voltage. I like to do, do, do I have current? Because that tells us, one, I have 24 volts, my switch is closed, I've got a good connection to my terminal, my PLC out input module is good, and I have a continuous path to my common. 
So right now, we ask ourselves, do I have current? I have 24 volt, it's coming to here, but my switch is open. So it says no, and it puts a zero there. Now if I close this switch, and I ask myself, do I have current? I have 24 volt, my switch is closed, I have a continuous path to my terminal, module's good, I got a DC common. So yes, I do have current, and that'll be a one. And then it does this for every input each time it goes through its input scan cycle. So now let's go over the output module. Yeah, so same, same as on the inputs, we have all those data boxes here in our data table. And that's these little boxes that you see right here. And like, for example, the first one is O colon zero dot zero slash zero. Now don't concern yourself too much about this address yet. We're going to get into it more in a few lessons from now. Uh, the next one will be O colon zero dot zero slash one. And internally, partially you got to use your imagination because yes, I know there's like transistors and all these crazy things, but we're not learning about transistors and everything. We're just learning about PLC programs here. So on each one of these, there is a terminal. There's two terminal screws on the Micrologix 1100. And this one here is labeled VAC VDC. And the terminal right beside of it is O slash zero. And internally this comes over and comes down and then we're gonna have a little switch in here. Again, yes, I know it's not a switch, but for our purposes, this is a switch. So then in our wiring enough to get started guide, this right here goes up to plus 24 volt. Then it's gonna go through, it goes over here, we have a light right here, and this is our green light. And then we go on to our power supply mines. And that's our circuit for this. So to start with on our program, we had a zero in that box. And so again, just like on the input side, you can ask yourself, do you have current? So we have 24 volt, it's coming down to this connection point. It's going through, but this switch, internal switch is open. So we did not get power to our green light, so it's not illuminated. So what I did was I went into our program and I put a one here. Now, first of all, immediately, that light did not turn on because I went and put a one there. A PLC keeps continuously scanning. When I say continuous scanning, it's doing like way more times than you can like blink your eye. Um, I don't know, feel like somebody tell me, what is it, like five milliseconds, two milliseconds? It's, it's super fast. And so, it's going to PLC is going to scan its inputs. It's going to execute its program, which includes just our end statement. It's going to update its outputs, and it's going to do its little bit of overhead. And it's going to come around and do it again. So, I changed this to a one in the program. So, even though there is nothing in here that turned that light on or off, PLC scanned its inputs, updated those data tables executed this program that just had this end statement in it. Then it came over here and it updated its output table. The output part of the scan cycle does not care how this output got here. It just sees there's a one. And so it goes over here and it closes the switch up. So now we have 24 volt. We have a continuous path to our BAC BDC terminal. We go through here. A little magical internal switch is now closed. So we have 24 volt onto our output terminal, which is connected to our green light, and then has a continuous path on to the power supply common. And so our green light is on. Doesn't matter what's going on here. You can turn this back off. It'll be a zero. It'll turn the green light off. You put a one back here, you put the green light on. Hope this video has been helpful. Uh, thanks for making it all the way to this part of the video because this may be the most important video in the series. Now, I, I probably say that about half of the videos, but I mean, really, th there's nothing that's not important that we're talking about. But this one right here, really grasping this concept is the difference between being someone who can kind of program PLCs and someone who is a PLC programmer or someone who can stumble through a PLC program when the machine's not running and someone who can really troubleshoot machines. I mean, this concept right here is what really will take you to the next level of 
your career or whatever your end goal is as far as PLCs, this may be the most important lesson. Next, we're going to go through some actual programming instructions such as XIC, XIO, and OTEs for turning on outputs. Uh, we're going to go through timers, counters, and then we're going to come back and visit this program scan again and really start diving deep into understanding it. Really, the key to writing great programs and troubleshooting programs is understanding how a PLC executes them. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.